Say hi. What's your name? Hi, Lisa. Say hi to Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Lisa's a little, a little girl. She's a customer here. So what are you doing here? I'm having dinner. We went to the bathroom. I'm drawing. I'm making a word. I'm drawing on the backside. This is all I got left of her. Oh, fingerprints.
This is hand to mouth pornography. One big trap door. Cheap, always available, always there. Always far too expensive, grossly unnecessary, quickly emptied, obsessive, obsessional, simple, trivial. It's not good enough, not anymore. That safety, that sense of a safety isn't going to do it this time. That control, the little mess, the little veil that allows you to mind you and keep things in order. It actually separates you from the gorillas and niggers and TV show moms and dads and 20 somethings has reached crisis point. There was always more presage and satisfaction. Always more stop and go, never more, probably never even enough really. It's nerves, it's want, it's greed. It's an ugly, dangerous, hated, fat black car that is not only denied and created or corrupted by that even uglier schism like hunting lying cops and therapists and lazy co-workers. Co-workers call schizophrenia. What it is is exact, perfect, real, ego. Now is the time. Something, everything, sold, purchased. There's an important scene missing. The new version is sure to disappoint. Still underground, but why they not depressingly illegal. Still, due only to its reputation, the low quality stock currently available exists as a safe marketing idea sold as a signpost. There's a smell, there's self esteem, self respect, guilt, fear, and independence, self sufficiency, and a photo, and that story. And this is how it'll start. She says, I'm safe and I'm secure. I'm very nearly 12, and everything is just fine. Just acting, and I hang out with my friends and have long talks with the other actors, and the director is really nice and really understanding. And all 11 years of her, lifts her long, old-fashioned skirt and turns her back to you. Shows you her professionally clad underwear and ass and skinny flesh. Her short child legs, thighs, and what she means is rape it. Two of her fingers not equal to his one thumb. Fuck it into the slicing bathroom mirror with her frail, tiny fingers and talcum hands scratching and rubbing and grabbing at the inside of her rusted bathroom porcelain sink. You fuck into it, all over. Fuck it inside. Fuck its little brittle bones inside all the pain and fear and pretend a deep, bright, short gut. You jerk your cum into it tight inside it, make it vomit and hurt and bruise and suffocate and choke up and just bleed a little bit of trouble. At Port Authority on 8th Avenue, there's some youngish white heroin coat. Bag of greasy blonde bones who will sell you her nearly two year old new baby's cum for just ten dollars. She says, You want to stick one of your fingers in my baby girl? And it's only ten dollars. She's careful who she offers it to, though. Cops will be told immediately from the front, so obviously it is. I wish to jam something more than my finger. Would it fit? Why not? Natural or unnatural? How much to fuck that mouth that offered to sell her baby? How much for a half an hour? Behind the lockers and a filthy stall in the men's room. She won't stop crying, will she? I have to be able to pick the place. Was a child a victim of sexual assault? Was she raped after being murdered? After? How long did he have her? How much time did he have alone with her? How old exactly? Did she look older? Was she wearing makeup? Was her skin under her fingernails? Were her nails done? Did she paint her toenails? Did her parents allow it? Did she have pierced ears? The swelling around her anus and vagina? Was it just from the rubbing? Did he bite her? His hands must have been huge compared to her little size cold body. Did anybody swab out the inside of her mouth like they did her cum? Was her spit in her? Did he tongue the hot inside of her open mouth? Did her painted twelve rolled only lips and clean brushed teeth? Where did he come? Was that all he wanted? Can you tell, long after death, the difference between piss and cum? pre coming intention? The drips that just always accidentally spill and drop and dot and stain her little mouth? With her tiny, tiny, little, barely visible, unfelt cuts at the sides of her lips from stretching and forcing, where she bruised and cut and purple and deep and black and puffed keloid scars and pools and sticky pee that glue from the underside of the tape pressed hard into such soft baby fat clean flesh. Her hymen, her nipples, her distended, shitted, sphincter nestled up perfectly between beaten and swollen and scratched and jabbed and cut and gnawed flesh more and more and more silver, probably her flood. And a sharp wood splinter scraped and embedded into a little twelve-year-old ass when he dragged her across. On her naked, begging, bony back, the hardwood old floor is screaming, writhing, twisted, muffled over the tight black seal electrician's tent, his cock up and hard and red, just like her thing bugged up, puffed her out, crying, screaming eyes, certainly. Definitely. Were her wrists cut and raw? How was she bound? Was her little fucking face pockmarked by gravity dirt? One select side of her face, a fatty innocent cheek, inside of a broken nose where she was forced down into the outside of dirt. 
the palms of her hands, a little bony shoulder, a badly battered strain neck, a vertebrae well out of place, pinched, disjointed, ruined, her hair, her long brown hair, that was shiny pure blonde earlier in life, probably, was a dry and brittle and stringy like it had been made all wet, down to her skull, like it had been soaked, were her lungs bruised, were there blood vessels inside her eyes popped and split from suffocation and slow and crushing cattle of brain death? How much did it cost? What do I get for my hundred dollars? Do I have to tip afterwards? Are you functional? Are you on hormones? What do you write on his forehead? And down across her fatty cheeks and across her full lipped mouth and down on her thin turned neck to send her home to mommy and daddy in the morning papers. In thick black magic marker, like you would buy in a corner drugstore, along with enough aspirin tablets to make a tiny thin stomach line and bleed all inside. Shut your fucking eyes. Hold still. Shut your fucking eye before I poke my fucking eye. You're right. You scrawl. Little rat. Little whore. A cup burning fat like her mother. Made old and used and absolutely. You're right. There is no innocence here. Not when it looks like this. When it keeps fucking crying. You shut your fucking eye. His, his cold-blooded hatred, his psychopathy, he is a psychopath, is probably all of these individuals that, that we have had on here today. They don't care. They'll do anything for self-gratification. These are, see, what this guy's trying to do at this point is, is make a case for himself. He knows he's going to prison. He's a coward. He's probably one of the most cowardly individuals on the face of the earth, as are all of the perpetrators that you've shown here today. Yet these individuals have this kind of macho mentality that they have to, they have to, you know, they, they kill babies. <laughs> out of these stories. Now, earlier last year, when all of the children were disappearing, a family in St. Louis brought a homeless man into their home. He murdered the little girl. The smarts have this bizarre habit of bringing criminals and homeless guys into their home. And as a result of that, they lost their daughter for nine months. So I think the lesson here is don't bring a homeless guy home. If you want to show benevolence towards the homeless, the question, give him 40 bucks and send him to a hotel. But don't bring him in. I, I, I can't even believe it that, that we're starting to hear things about his past. That, that implicate him in this kind of activity. Goodness knows how many crimes this guy's been involved in in the past, because I don't for a minute believe this guy just decided he was going to kidnap and murder this little girl out of, out of nowhere. <laughs>
again, you, you, you've shown an, an extraordinary amount of courage, but as I wasn't the one that was molested, I can't, I can't offer you forgiveness for, okay. for, for what you've okay. done. Yeah. Um, I've received your letter. Yeah. I've received letters from sex offenders and prisoners on a regular basis over the last 10 years, but I don't go there. I, I don't open them. I don't read them. Sure. Because I've been dominated by an evil mm -hmm. for so long yeah. that I feel it's my job to, to move forward and, and change or eradicate the evil as, 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 as I am able so that other parents won't go through what I've gone right. through, but most certainly so that other children won't go through what my Polly went through. Um, but, you know, thank you for the sentiment. <laughs>
happening. Uh, my sister I knew that she was saying it hurt and she was crying and out. And, and she looked at me and he saw her look at me and White so had taken he yelled at me to leave the room out of her home and not to tell and put us into his he his threatened car me parked out front and cursed at me and so I ran back down to my room and to a nearby hid under the blankets. How often and, uh, did this happen? This, he it seemed out to like all the time. I must have been and, about 12. Um, Although when secret, he started, we had between the, the following that I remember, he had asked me if I told him about your body. Sex. And so that, that was, was about 12. Um, if I had uh, right. spoken to anybody about how he was molesting right. me within the year of knowing him. And, so, um, and I think I was spared actual and intercourse and so, because um, I think my sister road, kept um, intervening. He um, ties up my yeah. sister who was in the back seat, six years old. She knew. Ties her hands and her, you know, legs She always up, knew. And, um, meanwhile, we're questioning were what he's doing and why he's doing it. And uh, right. throughout this time, he's like, just I would just ask her good. not to leave me home Don't with him word. because You'll see your, your mother, he, you know, I knew soon. he was planning on doing something. And, um, and she would always leave so me alone. With he takes him. me out of the car. Even when I would beg her, I would clutch up her shorts, clothes and her body and he tells say, Don't me leave take me. Off my pants. She would. And he I told him no. To and he was and just pulling me by my arm. And that's right. I was pretty. And that's when my sister started crying. I didn't weigh much. Saying, he why is he doing this? Me around like a I was just trying doll. to comfort her and tell her, you know, don't worry and about it, it'll be okay. He threw me down. And um, meanwhile, on I'm just asking bed. her, you know, Ray, or, you know, when are you going to be um, done? Um, at this time, I didn't feel anything anymore. The room. I just wanted it to be over. I can't remember now. And, um, and light, he proceeded um, to just. The sun was rising, light was. Uh, I didn't know then and, um, when you're a virgin that you bleed the first time. On. I was unaware of and, that. Um, he picked up my sister and I was bleeding. Still, um, tied up. And, and there had been me to, spots of blood um, and stuff on the sheets the woods. that we had used. So we kept on and walking when Darlene the woods. came home, she saw and that. He laid my sister down in and she acted like nothing happened. What did she say? And, um, he pulled out a knife and told me to say my prayers. She asked me if he pulled out. And after I didn't know what she meant. Started she to cut my throat. Made you pregnant. Right. And after he cut my throat um, three times. Oh, excuse me. Um, I was uh, a runaway at 14, and it was like a couple months before my 15th birthday. And after being all alone and not knowing how to take care of myself, I decided to go home. And that's when I started hitchhiking and got a ride from Lawrence Singleton. And he went off course um, when I dozed off. And when I came to, it was already getting late. It was getting dark. And he had already turned off the wrong road and made an, ex an excuse that he had to re release himself. So we pulled over, and I noticed my shoelace was untied. and. Um, I was getting an uneasy feeling, so I went out to untie or to tie my shoe. And when I looked up, he was—I heard something behind me, and he was right behind me. And he had knocked me out and dragged me into his van, and then took off in a deserted road somewhere. And that's where he repeatedly raped me and um, did all kinds of things. He, he even poured uh, alcohol mixed with milk down my throat and kept telling me to be quiet. And then on and off, I was unconscious and coming to. And uh, the last time I woke up, I was out of the van. And that's when I was begging for my life, asking him to set me free. And he replied, you want to be set free? I'll set you free. And he lifted up a hatchet. And that's when I, I tried fighting him off and was kicking and screaming. But I was realizing, wait a minute, I'm still holding onto his hand, but I'm, I'm laying on the ground. And that's when I realized that he had chopped off my left arm. And I immediately started meditating and tried to slow my heart rate down because I was just bleeding like a water fountain. And when I turned, he started chopping off my other arm and it took three blows.
and his response was, you want to be set free? I'll set you free. And he chopped off my hands. He chopped off my left hand. And I could see him do it twice. And then I saw this one being chopped off. just desperate to get back to my grandpa's house and it wasn't until we pulled off the side of the road because he claimed he had to relieve himself so I opened up my door to tie my shoe and that's when I heard him sneak up from behind me and hit me on the head with a hammer. After that he, he had raped me quite a few times before he cut off my head. Again, take a good look at this guy. The FBI says disgusting pictures of him molesting children are being passed around on the internet. Agents say they show him molesting at least two different children, a boy and a girl. They have the evidence to put him away as soon as they can find out who he is. I keep thinking that all I see him by is kitty porn. All I do is search out wretched illegal matter that should be illegal, but shouldn't be so unavailable. How sickening it is to pretend that the young plugs that I've had in here, that march in here, are any different from any displacement bots. Just because the motherly concern has melted away slightly, to phone calls and dinners rather than the teacher meetings and babysitters, I do not see the difference, even in the aesthetics. Shaved, smooth, fat, stinking, firm, changeable, witty, intelligent, gym rats with tans that are supposed to fill in for Greeks who fell in for the little pricks you've been staring at while you bounce around your little rent neighborhood or the Russian street shits that line every library now for you cool. The difference in size is everything, darling. This little packing faggot told me you hated body hair and big cocks, and they all say that immediately. You liked very small pink assholes. Is it everything? I only fucking dream about doing with my big yapping mouth, apparently, and then sells me the story. These repulsive zit kissers. They walk around with blonde, thin, red-faced boys wrestling with gender confusion at an even earlier age than the jerk-offs I get to come on. They undress them and suck them into erection as if they accomplish something from their side. They lick and suck and fuck tiny tight assholes that are easily kept that way through lengthened homosexual adulthood. These old men who think they can slide under human radar and still come with other men. Old men with bellies so distended and drooped, you have to get on your knees to locate their dicks straight on and then see they're wearing cock rings. They're better than this. A thin boar in Paris wasting my time in a McDonald's top down and on about nothing. I listen to him all day, yapping unbearable nonsense. And then I have to see the ugly beasts he fucks underneath all this makeup. The old foul, clowns, disgusting, trendy slobs and TV watchers. You wouldn't shut up. And felt hurt in the sense I would rather be somewhere else. You can't give up your time like that anymore. And the sexy to see it was impossible. You think there is something fitter and worse that they deserve it. 
as if it's something not out of reach. But you have to understand something deeply so you can receive it. These are stupid people, repulsive people, this cunt laver. This cunt laver who talked about the adult women he slept with as if he was offering a technique to get them, as if his choices were interesting. These thongs, these retards, wine sippers, sambas. I see it too much. I'm only interested in pretty girls now. I can only look at them. And I do want to see their, flash, their faces slashed across like the criminals do to Ray Whiting, Peter Suckler, and what they want to do to Ian Hartley. I couldn't touch these cunts. I'm completely petrified. I'm completely controlled by whatever it is I misunderstand by the media. I want these slim, cunted little girls, as young as person they allowed to raise their shirts just high enough so that I can see their navels. I'm a fat, over-middle, over-middle-aged stomach watcher. Some slug stuck at home masturbating at a little leg, which is how I know and why I'm right. It comes from listening to boys sing in trouble. From filling my head and my part with these shrill clipped horses and forcing the filthy cocksuckers that lay all over and out of my head. It comes from taking delight in the girls that are dancing and the boys who are realizing that one is sold circumspect and the other is two little girls looking for role model fantasies. Little mentalities that I want to see ripped open instead of preciously toppled. Girls get raped by unthinking animals like these, these faggot tumblers. This is what happens. The girls I choose do not dress especially sexy for an older market. It's a marketing ploy. They pretend if they must to be nice girls, as long as there's lots of bright clothes, and as long as they're flat and sprouting and look somewhat like the little cunt I've watched grow up inch by inch million miles away from me. I asked her if she wanted to see me masturbate to her photos. I couldn't touch her anymore. I despise adults. I despise the adults. The idea of adults having sex, the sports of need of embarrassing stabs of tenderness and care. None of these animals would deny that side by side that the younger tweens come off infinitely sexier. The adults will lie, but it is true. Even in young adults, the lumps are degrading beneath the children. The cut up children are my favorites. Words only. Not these Indonesian trolls, these little six year old animals from Kuwait, fuck her and the Arabs that raped her and murdered her on the desert. I saw them hanging out on the photos of little shit stain they smeared across themselves. This is not at all what I want. You think I want to take care of this little kids? You think I want to protect them? I want to babysit one single little hairless slash that I fucking picked out saved from all of this. Not like one of these tortured fucking pedophile rats that thinks this may be bad for them. I do protect it, you cunt. That would be the difference. I don't fucking touch it. You suck on these pedophiles like a child pornography and suddenly you find yourself pretending to be the little girl or boy they want to fuck and do. A miserable place to stall, no matter how patently untrue. You remove yourself from it. You take your lips away. Your hand from your balls and your ass. And you place a nice photograph out on the floor and you rub your cock into nothing at all. Five minutes later, you tell yourself you won't do it. Particularly, young boys with blonde hair and blue eyes. Like Aton Pates. Well... Uh, Stuart Grabois can say anything he wants to say. You never had a particular fascination for blonde hair, blue eyes, young boys? No, I wasn't into the, to the, to the Viking thing.
that will never change. <laughs> but that will never change. Change. That will never change. <laughs> but that will never change. Change. Should you um, yes. help yes. um, me? Whenever he came she out to play, me. And he was a pretty me. decent she said, kid. Help um, me. She he, uh, she said, help dressed me. fine. She he screaming. she said, help me. Acted fine. Me. I mean, she was screaming. She said, help um, me. Yes. Um, she was screaming. She said, help me. She was screaming. She said, help me. She was screaming. She said, help me. She was screaming. She was screaming. She said, help me. She was screaming. She said, help me. Gary would come and he'd have the bone panties there. And he'd say, Look, we got this one for the guy recent. Whenever he gave two hundred fifty dollars. Hey, the Gary got these on, let's do it. And at that point I was just I felt like I didn't have a choice. And it was already a done deal. I mean I just I I kept saying no and I didn't want to do it. I saw the video.